Okay, so like I said, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take our base layer. I'm just going to do this quickly. It's easier. Alright, so on the base layer, we're going to put our colors, our base colors. Uh, we're going to use purple because purple's cool. We'll color it in a little bit here and fix up all these white spots. Spots everywhere. Mm. Okay, so once you have your base done, um, only thing is going to be a little bit different is because every program is going to be a little bit different uh, in terms of it. So if you use Photoshop or I don't know, fucking MS Paint, it's going to be a little bit different. So Assuming you have layers on all these programs, um, what we're going to do is, for mine, for Psy, uh, they have this thing called Clipping Group. So if you click the Clipping Group and on a new layer above your base, what it does is it makes sure that you can't color off of it. So whatever you do always stays on that base layer. So if you change it over to the line art, it will never change, as you can see here. Well, it won't run off the that layer. So it comes in handy so when you're trying to do coloring you don't have to worry about going off the uh, the baseline or or staying within the lines. Okay, so with that, uh, once you have your base done, uh, you're going to take the darker shade. So there's two ways of doing it. So you can either select it by hand, uh, so if whatever color you want, uh, you can get creative, make it a, a darker of the same shade or get fancy and start I don't know, picking different colors like maybe a blue or something like say for purple but today we're just going to do the same color the other way you can do it is by changing the layer to a uh, to multiply and what it'll do is if you select the color it'll automatically make it a darker tone for you so that's sometimes a better way some people don't like doing it uh, I guess it just uh, doesn't help them later on if they're trying to do it straight out. But uh, sometimes it comes easier, so I just pick, you can pick the multi-layer and then it'll make the color darker for you. For myself, I don't use it too often, maybe if I'm kind of screwing around with coloring. but So I just take a darker color and select it myself. So, with that, what you're going to do is you're going to put your shading on. So, for this example, I'm going to have the lighting coming from... I'm just going to make it a quick thing coming from this side, so it's like, well, so the sun's coming, so the lighting's coming from this side of the of the page. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make everything a little bit darker on one side here. And if anything, as I'm going through here, this is why I'm doing it live, I, if I'm missing anything or skipping over something you don't understand, please tell me so I can address it because trying doing this by myself earlier I wasn't sure if I was making more sense or if I was skipping a step or something or you just don't understand it and it's a little easier to address it live than uh, you know 10 hours later on a page on a comment page All right, so with that like I said um, we're gonna color in the shades here so, So I was going to make it darker um, in terms of where the lighting is. And uh, in terms of that, I'm going to do a whole thing on on shadows and stuff like later on. So I won't go too detailed about that right now. But we'll, like I said, we'll give you a basic idea how this works. So go like this. All right. We want to clean it up as we go here, so it makes a little bit more sense. And I'm going to rest, brush this a little bit, so it might be a little messy, but that's okay. Because let's fix it up later. All right. Um, the other thing is, especially if you're like doing uh, something that has like maybe a curve to it, like a leg or something, or the body. You want to put a little bit of darker shade on the uh, 
on the edges, just to kind of give it a more of a, a depth feel. Uh, that sometimes helps a little bit to make it pop out more. So this. That's done. Okay, color this in. I feel like it's gonna be one of those uh, cooking shows where I should have like a roast already made so I can just show you the final result. And we've already done this over here. But whatever. Kind of gives you the step by step while we're doing it live here. Okay, so assuming this is done, um, what you can do, there's kind of two options. You can do it, just leave it how it is, like like, uh, like it is right now, like with the, the basic shading, uh, which I can normally sometimes do. Or we can do another layer of shadow. Does that make sense here? Since that one's used. Alright, All right. so what you can do is make a secondary layer and go over it with a darker color again, just to give it more of a, more depth to it. I'm not sure if it pops out enough on your screens, but it'll definitely show make it a little bit more darker. So you're just gonna go along the uh the edges of the of the shadow with more of a darker color. Okay, we're gonna assume this is done. Um, another trick is uh, a few programs themselves will have a way to adjust uh, the hue of the uh, drawing. So for Psy it has its own settings. I'm sure Photoshop has its own stuff. But uh, what you can do is you can always play around with the uh, the darkness. So you like play around with how it looks. Sometimes it might adjust it a little bit better. So that's always an option, so you don't have to keep recoloring something that looks kind of odd to you. 
Oops. Well, there we go. Um, so we do it like that. Maybe adjust that more. All right. So once that's done, uh, once you do kind of do your your shadowing, what you can do, or what I do, I should say, is I select the same color as uh, the base, and then I put on um, a light uh, layer, so it makes everything kind of more brighter for the coloring. And that will make it uh, appear very shiny. You go along the edges of the line art. Like so. But again, like I said, if you don't like using those kind of specialized layers, you can just take a brighter color and go over it with your soap and just make sure it's coming out correctly. But since, uh, you know, program does it for you. Might as well do it so you don't have to work as hard. And okay, let's go over this quickly. And brush settings don't matter too much. Everybody has their own style, so you don't have to worry about that too much. As long as you get in the general idea of where it's just a, a thin line along the edges of the line art. You can always make it thinner or more thick as you like. Maybe it uh, will come out differently for yourself. Or even better. That's done. Get down the next leg here. So once you go down like the uh, both sides, you can actually go on both sides of uh, the coloring. That will give it uh, more of a pop to that too. Some more of a depth feel. Same on both sides here. Max. Okay, well, when you're doing something like uh, like for uh, like breasts, uh, what you're gonna do is you're not gonna do the entire breast in terms of like where the lighting. Just do it on like where the darkest areas are um, along the sides, like so, so it kind of sticks a little bit more. So if you do it both sides, it looks kind of rounded and doesn't look as as interesting as it could be. All right. So basically, once you're done, like the basic idea of your shading and your lighting of the edges, what you're gonna do is uh, let's go over um, the midsection and start kind of making it um, appear more like a la latexy. I guess is the word we're gonna go with. So you're just gonna make lines like so. I don't have an exact science for this, I can just go around with it and see what looks good, what doesn't. But, go like this. Let's make a single line and start thinning it out. Boxing it off as we go here. 
And then a way to make it seem like it's uh, stretching. Oop, one second here. What? I missed the spot. How does this uh, shade of color to go with? That is a little bit harder to understand. Um, the selection of color is going to be based on what you're doing. Like, there's not going to be an exact science for it. Um, I myself. I'm not too into how color selection works, but what you're going to do for the shade is you're just going to make a, dollar, a darker color of like what the base layer is. So, like I said, you can play around with that in terms of it because some things will work, some don't. Uh, like you might have seen some of my, uh, say my pink latex ones. I use like a dark purple, but it kind of jumps around for what that. Um, sometimes the dodge burn one, sometimes I don't myself don't like using the dodge or burn as much because it kind of makes everything look kind of muddy, but what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of play around with it. Like I said, if you use that hue uh, selection one, you can just kind of play around with it what colors you like. So it's like, oh, I would like have this, you know, bright yellow or, you know, dark pink. So you can play around with it as much as you like. And then, so you don't have to keep recoloring everything. And sometimes that uh, helps out a lot. So like I said, what you're going to do is, uh, and for the lighting, you're just going to break it apart in terms of uh, for the the lines here. So it kind of gives it that stretched feel. And then adding a few little break aparts like that. Just kind of play around with it. That looks kind of okay. Like so. Oops, I gotta do this arm for a second here. Rushing ahead, and I forgot to do an arm. There we go. Alright. Alright, so, like I said, you're just gonna. Like, and like for like say a breast or not, you can just do like kind of like circles, that kind of gives that feel, and then like this. What you're gonna do is just go along the edge of the shadow, and just make it uh, so it rides along it a little bit. Let's see. But yeah, if you're if you're really into, like you want to learn that, there is I, I'll see what I can do to kind of teach coloring. But there's color selection is very difficult. Like most people don't really understand how it works, and they just kind of go with whatever. But there is a whole like artist thing into it. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Okay, so when you're doing a body, uh, what you want to do is you want to make it seem like it has tone to the uh, to the body itself. So you're going to shape it. Something wrong here. So you're going to shape it uh, so it kind of curves around, kind of makes the torso look like it's, it has a, a little bit of tone to the stomach. So you don't want to have a super straight line or anything because that just doesn't look correct. So you just want to keep uh, making a little bit more curve to it. So it kind of spins like that. And again you just want to break it apart so it looks like it's kind of stretching. My style has a lot of racing, so <laughs> not everybody's going to be kind of doing that. Um, but it's what I do, I don't know why. I just enjoy erasing the picture to make it look like what I wanted to. 
Okay, so what we do here. Okay, and then for the shadows, what you want to do, uh, you want to kind of go back to uh, the base shadows and just kind of give it more more tone to like the drawing itself, okay. like this. So it's not like she has a flat stomach. So it's going to be a lot of reworking, kind of making everything look like it should. Instead, uh, I'm not the best artist in the world here, but uh, we gives you an idea of what's going on. Another trick is, um, so your colors look right, what you're going to do is um, take a, a dark color like gray and you want to put it as your background when you're coloring because what they'll do is they'll cancel out your, uh, basically your, your eyes so it will check it out as the color should be instead of uh, being kind of, uh, kind of a, can't think of the word right now, but image effect. I can't think of who the word is. That's strange. But. Optical illusion, there you go. So sometimes that will mess with your eyes and like one color will look differently to you than it should be. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do this a little bit, just kinda give them more depth. So that's the idea here. Just continue doing that until that looks okay. While we're continuing with this, any more questions? While I'm thinking, what to do next here? How do you determine your light source? Okay, um, again, that's going to be a little bit more in depth, but what you're going to do is if you figure out where the light's coming from. So, in this sense, uh, we just do the actual light. So, like, this is an example like this. So, the light is coming from this direction. So when you're thinking about it, the shadows are going to be on the well, obviously it's not going to be exact, but the uh, the shadows are going to be on the uh, on the opposite side of where the light's coming from. So if you ever you know just basically look around your own your own house to see uh, where the shadow is coming from. So where the light's coming from, the shadow is always going to be behind it. So in this sense, it's going to be behind since she has a curved body. It's going to be on the other side of the light source, and the closer you get to the light, and the more more bright it's going to get. So in this sense, it's going to be on this side, on the character's left side or right. Oops. In the wrong colors here. There we go. So it's always going to be brighter on this side. But that always changes for wherever direction the light's coming from. Like, say, if it was going overhead. You're gonna have all the light source on like up here, or if it was coming from below, it's gonna be up here, and the shadows are gonna be more on this side. So that will determine where the light's coming from. So you gotta figure that out before you color, because 
or actually before you even start, because it's, it's a little harder to change your perspective once you don't, once you know where the light's coming from. So it's always good to figure out where you want the uh, light to start off first, but sometimes you just gotta wing it. So, yeah, like I said, it's one of those things you just got to kind of play around with until you kind of get the idea of how light source works, but essentially it's just guessing. So, once you figure that out, you'll kind of kind of work colors in to make it uh, appear like the light's coming from one direction over the other. Because you don't want light coming from both sides. So, like say, if I change this around, like you don't want the light coming from here, and then you'll have two light sources. But like in the real world, there is multiple light sources, so. Your shadow might be a little bit lighter on one side than the other. Or 50 50 everywhere. Um, but, like I said, it's just practice. It's not going to be like going to get it 100% every time or anything. Even the professionals sometimes screw it up, so it's not like everybody's a, a master at it. So just kind of do the best you can and see how it comes out. If it doesn't look right, you can always, always rechange it. That's the good thing about uh, kind of digital art is as a sense. It's a little harder on paper. Yeah, like me. I definitely don't do it hundred percent every time. <laughs> Half the time I'm just guessing. I'm gonna say pretty much hundred percent of the time. Kidding garden easy. <laughs> well, I've been doing it for a long time, so it's one of those things that just kind of do it without thinking. But that's it. I'll, that's why I was trying to see if I can do a tutorial because it's a little harder for me to understand how I do my art. I just kind of yeah, I did it. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I just did. That's why I was wondering if there's any questions, if there you need to know something specific, we can address it. Because um, it's a little hard for me to pick and choose what I do and don't do, because I, I just kind of like, yeah, I'm going to gonna draw it. <laughs> I'm not perfect, 100%. There are far, far more people better than me than I'll ever be. I just get along. I do what I do. But if I can teach somebody and they can become better than me, all the power to them. Alright. So, um, once you get the lighting down, um, kind of screw it around and you got it to the point where you do it. There's a few little tricks you can do. I do it off and on depending on kind of how I feel. But, I'll show you a second here. All right. So one trick you, you can, can do here. No, I'm not the best. There's some people uh, I wish I could be. 
I'll do it again. So anyways, uh, what you can do here is when you take a light layer and you can take the airbrush tool and the settings are going to be a little bit changed as you go but what you can do is you can go over the, uh, the lighted areas with an airbrush tool just lightly and that will make it kind of appear a little bit more bright and shiny Sometimes I like doing it, sometimes I don't, just because, I don't know, it doesn't look as good sometimes. Like so. One thing you can do if you're, uh, you're not happy is you can use the uh, uh, opacity and just kind of change it so sometimes you know, it'll look a little bit better if it's uh, a little bit more uh, transparent. That's weird. All right. All right. So you do that. Um, then what you can do is uh, what I've been kind of doing the last couple times is going all the way back down to the uh, the base layer, selecting the shade color again, and going over with an airbrush to where the uh, the dark parts are uh, or the where the shadows are, and just kind of giving it a more of a blended look. Like this. Doesn't have to be like super done. As you can see, I'm using a pretty big brush. Just kind of going over it quickly. So. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just something to give it more of uh, more depth to it. So and then you turn on the uh, other layers, kind of gives this view. Like that. So that's pretty much how I do it. Like there's not much else to coloring latex. Like it's pretty straightforward. No real amazing tricks to it. But um, like I said, it's just testing things. Sometimes I do things. Sometimes I don't. It's always about the drawing. And uh, this is what I don't know. Any uh, any questions? Any other tips you liked uh, while we're sitting here thinking? Missed the lighting spot. I'm all set. <laughs> We're all set. Set to take on the world. I don't know, as long as it made sense, that's all. No, actually it was only like 25 minutes. <laughs> um... What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically put out this actual this liner itself 
I don't know. Try testing to see what you guys can do with uh, just that. Like try to recreate it. You might get more uh, more understanding. Sometimes it's harder to apply that to a new drawing. We don't really know how it works. Um, so I might just do a, put up that line art uh, and you know download it, screw around with it, like uh, see what you can do to uh, kind of recreate it, and it might be a little bit easier for you. Other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. How do you do light white latex? White latex is a little bit harder. What you're gonna do is so let's we'll change this to whites. So the same kind of idea, uh, same idea is what you're gonna do is, but everybody does white latex a little bit differently. Um, what you can do is sometimes a, a light blue will make it look uh, a little bit brighter, uh, a little bit darker, but not too dark. So example is this: Just take off, turn off all these. All right, so. Okay, so like a, a light blue like this will still appear a little bit white, but uh, like a kind of a darker white. Then you can apply that to pretty much everything. Just hit the wrong buttons here. Okay. And then, like I said, you just continue doing that with darker colors. Same idea as uh, with the purple there. So just continue making it darker. Turn this on. So you can turn on your white again. Turn on that. Let's wait latex. It's not hard. Once you have the idea of like just generalize, you can just kind of play around with it. Uh, I really like that. Uh, Like I said, once you have the base color down, you can change it to whatever you want. I always see people doing that. And like I don't know why they do it. Uh, they'll have like 18 recolors up. It's like it's not that hard to recolor. Like I can pretty much do that all day if I want to. Like watch. Oops, I did select this one. Yeah. And oops, get switched to a darker color. Uh -huh. Put the buttons here. There we go. Ooh, ooh. Pen's not working right. See, change to whatever. But we can go all the way back. Here. Purple again, because I don't feel like recoloring. There we go. See, now you can make it anything you want. <laughs> Kind of dark. Make it green. But yeah, like for white itself, it's whatever color uh, you want uh, white to be representative. Um, once you kind of get into it, you can try using different colors that are around the setting. 
So for example, make everything white here. Right here. So say if you're like in a forest or something, you're gonna have that as a, like a, a a light green. Or I don't know if they're near fire or something. I don't know. Maybe it's like a light orange. So it changes your perception of color, right? So it's still white, nothing's changed, but it changes the entire look of the of the latex. That's why you, people usually use blue. Let's see if I change it to purple, everything looks purple now. Okay, right. have fun. It's all colors, man. Then you go like this, and your eyes kind of shift to white again.